My name is Nathan Crick. I'm a professor of rhetoric and public address at Texas A&M. Uh, I graduated with a degree in environmental science and journalism from the University of Massachusetts. And then I got my MA and PhD from the University of Pittsburgh in communication. When I was at the University of Pittsburgh, my dissertation was on John Dewey and the art of communication. I worked with Dr. John Palakis, where I combined classical knowledge with pragmatism to try to extract a distinct rhetorical theory from the work of John Dewey as it related to democracy, to art, to science, uh, and how to integrate these things into a total theory of democratic deliberation and public address. I was really attracted to John Dewey because he really focused on education on the one hand and democratic social life on the other. And it was sort of my endeavor to try to integrate a theory of argumentation and persuasion within his theory of democracy and also his theory of education. How can we really bring rhetorical skills and methods into the classroom to teach citizens, future citizens, to be um, better advocates for what they believe uh, so that we can make social life better. Besides contemporary theory, I always have a foot in the classical world. I think that the work of the sophists, Aristotle, Plato, uh, and some of the other Greek thinkers can really help us put ourselves in a different situation to really imagine ourselves in that sort of classical Greek moment as maybe idealized as it might be, where we have citizens deliberating about, um, about shared problems. So the classical vocabulary is really useful because it really simplifies and it is an active vocabulary. It is about people doing things, responding to things, and it is really meant to be a method of action uh, rather than something that's so jargon filled that it is outside the experience of the students. I think when I first started communication, I tended to use far more of a um, lecture and paper orientation. Now I do a lot more projects, a lot more criticism. Uh, I, I incorporate a lot more contemporary examples. Even the time when I started teaching from 1998 to now, the amount of artifacts we have available at our fingertips to bring into the classroom through media is infinitely more than when I started. I had to make photocopies and put them up on the overhead projector. I couldn't, we never had projectors in our classroom. We had to wheel in a VCR from tapes that were from 1950, like the great speeches from 1940, and you'd have Eisenhower. Like that was the speeches that we had available for us at that time. So a lot of times in teaching propaganda, for instance, I have them make a propaganda video using their phones, using their digital technologies in which they present them in the classroom. So they become producers, not just consumers of media and of rhetoric.